All right, today's lesson is the bass. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and keep a real simple video going on today. We're just going to look at our setup, some effects we're going to use, and some quick thoughts about the bass and what it should be good for. Okay, so you need to learn how to do this. When someone makes a joke, you got to be able to do that. Whoa! You'll get a job on Letterman. Now, uh, so here it is. I've got my rock and bass, four strings, pretty simple. It's going to be a lot simpler setup than uh, the guitar because uh, you don't use a lot of effects on bass necessarily because mostly the range that you'll be in is the real bottom end, the meat of your sound, where people dance, you know. It's the bottom end. So that is a really long waveform in sound. And if you think about putting... Uh, like a delay on a bass, then it just becomes uncontrollable, uh, chaotic, and washing. So, more often than not, you'll have a lot of effects on the top end of your sound, reverb on your vocals, guitars, possibly keyboards, you know, uh, on your snare drum, but not that much, I mean there is too, but not that much effects on the bottom end because you need a real tight, thumping, dance groove, right? And you need the bass, the bass is going to be holding down that frequency range, that real thumping kick, and bass. And that's why when we work with our next video we're going to have practice on putting the kick and the bass drum together to make people dance. You know, boom, 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 boom tsh, something like that. Okay? <laughs> um, okay. And uh, so we've got our effects here and usually uh, most guys only use one of two effects and they will use compression on bass and we'll use chorus. Compression is going to be really essential, especially on bass guitar, especially when you get on stage too, because everyone uses it to what they call tighten up the bass sound. And what that means is it just makes you sound like a much more consistent player. It makes you sound better without people even noticing it. And that's what you want, and that's what's cool. Okay, so we've got our rig here, we've got our tone controls, bass and treble, we've got our volume control, we plug in here and we plug into our effects. You can use a pick or your fingers, but uh, you know, the affiliates, you, you, you go into your affiliates and learn about how to play bass, I'm not going to try and teach you how to play bass, because I don't really know. <laughs> you discovered that I'm all bullshit. No. Um, so here's our first idea. I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to turn up our amp here, which is uh, going to be our bass amp for today. Ta-da! It's a crappy old PV amp, but it's big enough to rehearse with. Okay? So you need kind of something about this loud. You can buy smaller amps that are loud enough, and you you know the smaller the better as far as that is because they're really heavy to carry around, and the less you have to carry around. Oh my God, the better it's going to be, because I've carried a lot of heavy gear, heavy gear in my time and I always hated it. So look on our affiliates and we're going to have some nice bass amps that are small and loud and they're going to have some good frequencies going on. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about uh, compression, okay? So first I'm going to turn my compression off. That's just straight bass sound into an amp that's, that frequency is set flat, okay? So that doesn't sound too bad. And now I'm going to turn my compression on and see if you can tell the difference. Now I don't know if you can really tell through this little mic and because it's a bass frequency you probably listen to this on your computer. But what it just did is brought the sound right in like that, okay? So now you can turn yourself up and you'll sound really consistent and all of a sudden everyone in the, in the band will kind of feel this kind of consistent bottom end holding up the whole sound. And that's what you're going to build your sound on. You're going to build the sound on the, on, uh, like the rock solid bass. It's like, look at it as kind of a harmonic tree, right? This is, artistically speaking, you've got your bottom end sound, and if it's solid, then you can build uh, uh, build your house, 
on this frequency, right? And if it's not solid and it's not there, all the stuff you do up here doesn't make sense and it won't fall in together. Um, it won't become creative and you'll wonder why you, you know, you're starting to suck and you don't know why and your songs don't make sense and, they, and nothing's grooving. Well, it's because you've got to build on a really solid bottom end. That's why we're working on consistency of beats, consistency of sound, just really simple stuff. And the other thing is, is you're going to have to, you know, usually what happens when you start playing with a group and you're a bass player, you're going to be playing fairly simple stuff and we'll go through the, the next tutorial that way because you have to be consistent to hold up that feel and it's really the groove and the feel that's mostly your job as an early player just really simple stuff is going to hold up the initial uh, you know expressions of your band as you get better you can start doing tricky stuff but to make the whole band sound good if you can do one simple thing consistently all of a sudden it's going to sound like you're making music you're going to enjoy your songs you'll be creative you'll start uh, you'll start kind of opening that aperture of possibility instead of being stuck kind of trying to work out why it isn't working and why you, you guys aren't jamming very well together because you have to if you keep it simple and keep the idea of that solid bottom end like your house is made of bricks you know your bass playing is made of bricks then you can build the house nice and strong. If you don't have the fundamental sound, which is the kick and the bass, together, pumping, there's nothing to dance to. And it's just kind of noise built on nothing, okay? So we talked about compression. Get a compressor and use it. And all of a sudden you'll, be, uh, you'll sound great. And the only other effect, which is just a chorus, you know, going to make you sound like Rush. Simple. No, no big deal. None of this stuff really matters. What really matters is actually playing with the band, consistently getting a nice, strong, thumping sound. And then from there you'll learn yourself. You don't need me for that. The only other thing is, is just looking at how loud you want to be in the rehearsal space and how, uh, you know, because this amp can be really loud. And if you crank it up really loud, bottom end frequencies are just going to shake the whole place. And it'll feel good because there's a, lot, ni a, a nice, uh, you know, nice foundation to sit on, you know. It's really fun to be jamming in a room and you just feel the air moving from your bass. It's like boom. And, you know, that's great. But just be careful not to screw up the sound of the whole room. Because if you're way too loud, it changes the dynamics of the way everyone else is going to have to play to you. And just make sure that that's the way you want it, you know. If you're uh, so loud that the guitar player's turning up, that the drummer's playing much differently because he can't hear himself, and then all of a sudden the vocal is screaming, and, all, and your music's has changed. Whereas if you've got a little subtlety going on, little dynamics, and you're all at the nice sweet volume that you can hear yourselves, you're all grooving together, then that's when you're going to start taking off, okay? So, this was our cool tutorial about bass.